So analytic chemist, what do we do? Well, as you see, the rather provocative title here, we actually do everything. We take care of you, we make sure that life, universe and everything is functioning well. So I will try to tell you a bit of what we're doing. First of all, already Lord Kelvin uh, decided that if we can measure something, we can actually understand it. And if we can understand and measure something, we can repair it. Some other smart person said, why repair something that's not broken? But as you will see, sometimes it is broken. So what do analytic chemists do? This picture is unfortunately in Swedish. We do everything, as I said. We are everywhere in society. We meet all kinds of different objects and problems. But the skill we have is to measure and understand. And that has become extremely fruitful in many different areas, as you see. First of all, we can go to the clinic part, and I will tell you a bit of what we are doing, where we work at the hospital. We will work in environmental issues. We will measure things in nature, in industry. We will make sure that the things we produce will not cause a bad effect in society and in nature, for instance. So anywhere you find us, we can be in the criminal laboratory, in the doping lab, for instance. After a sports event, we will do the analysis and screening of all the samples that have been collected. Uh, what we also do, and that's more related to what the clinical research is, we are trying to break the bad in society. And in this case, breaking bad can be what happens to us as a human mankind when we grow old. This lady walked over a rice field in Ohara, north of Kyoto, when I saw her. And she can represent the aging population in society. What happens when we get old is a number of things. We can get illnesses of different kinds, cancers and so on. But also neurodegenerative diseases is quite uh, rapidly increasing in society. So only in, in uh, Sweden we have over 100,000 demented patients with Alzheimer's disease, for instance. And as you see, the older we get, the more likely we will have one of these disorders. And we need to understand and, and grasp what is the cause for these diseases. So what we do is, for instance, studying the living brain, we look at what is happening in the central nervous system uh, when we are healthy, but also what happens when we get a disease. Uh, we do that in different ways. We do sampling at the neurosurgery, extremely tricky procedures. We do open skull uh, surgery, or we go through the ear into the brain. Hope anybody anon is uh, very sensitive to pictures, but this is just how it looks like millimeter large uh, hole you put inside the brain and actually can pull out small small samples. So this kind of sampling we do. What else are we working with? Well, body fluids. And our favorite body fluid is the centrally produced liquid called the cerebrospinal fluid. And it's a liquid that actually represents the chemical environment in the central nervous system. It's a fantastic possibility for us to actually look at what is happening in a healthy or a diseased brain. So we have about 150 milliliters, and you all produce enough for us to do analysis for thousands of times, just while you listen at me, actually, for 10 minutes. So if we can get a sample, that would be fantastic. And hopefully most of you are healthy, and that would be also a good advantage for us to look at. We do lumbar punctures, so we draw a sample by a needle through the back, in the lower region of the back. Doesn't hurt, you get the local anesthesia, and then we draw the sample and get the liquid out. We screen all the biomolecules in the sample, and that is, of course, thousands and thousands of different molecules. Some of them are quite easy to measure because they are there in high concentration, and some, unfortunately, the most interesting ones are at extremely low concentrations. And that's why we need analytical chemistry, because we can have a chance to monitor these molecules with high precision and with high specificity. We can also get easier samples, and this, I guess, is also a bit invasive, but it's easy to get samples from patients. You do a, a sampling from a muscle, for instance. You take a piece of the tissue, and then you do the analysis of that. And that can also be relevant for aging and for the central nervous system in, uh, in the innovation of muscles. For the techniques, if you want to play with large, extremely expensive instrumentation, I can tell you that analytical chemistry is the field to go to extremely large technical advanced and super sensitive instrumentation unfortunately expensive uh, they come in different flavors uh, these are just a few of those that we have in the department called mass spectrometers they can monitor they can weigh and they can specify exactly the composition in the sample of very high complexity 
So for instance, a biological fluid from a body, piece of tissue. Uh, some instruments are very well dedicated for this task, so we can take an intact protein, maybe in collaboration with, for instance, Helena, isolate the protein and take the whole sample, the, the protein mixture, into the instrument and then pull the protein in part inside the instrumentation and get full sequence coverage, all the modifications of the protein, what is good and what is bad in the sample. Or we can do a simple testing by just dropping a piece of, or a droplet of blood on a piece of paper and then do scanning directly on the paper for certain markers. We present the sample to the instrumentation in different ways. It can be a liquid, as I said, a body fluid that we separate, multidimensional, or we can put it as a small droplet on the solid surface, or even take a piece of tissue. As you see in the lower four panels here, we have sliced a piece of brain, and then we do a scanning of the instrument with the instrumentation across the tissue, and then we get molecules of interest in there. Over the years, we've done a lot of different studies. We just, uh, a couple of years ago, mapped the whole human proteome, the protein content in healthy individuals. So over 200 samples from Sweden. Uh, we have been working a lot with the sampling, how to get the sample out, how to monitor the sample, how to handle it, detection, verification of the findings, the validation, then into the clinical application, patient care and the patient. So personal medicine, you can call it. We can do simple analysis and actually monitor back to the patient in the end. Uh, this technique pulls us into many different applications, and uh, this is just a few papers that we have published last year. Uh, for instance, new psychiatric markers for neurodegenerative diseases or uh, markers of, of uh, personality types like autism spectrum disorders you see on the top panel. We have done population-based studies where we screened a whole village up in the north of Sweden, Karlsvando. They have been mapped in total detail, both genetic and proteomic and uh, metabolomic mapping of the whole population. But also we can get into soft, uh, systems where they want to know a basis for a whole new organelle in a very strange organism, something that has not been discovered or mapped before, and we can help out doing the full mapping of the organelle. This is the last paper, that, or last uh, thesis that's been presented at the department. And this is just to show you the broad witness of what we are doing. So for here, here we actually did the sampling of lake water sediments and monitored the environmental effects on water and lakes uh, in the, up in the north of Sweden and also around Uppsala region. And we could actually target where do all the pollutants go and where do all the phosphorus compounds go that leads to uh, nutrification problems and so on. So, as you see, a lot of things goes on in analytical chemistry. So my conclusion is, uh, and that's also borrowed from Lord Kelvin, when you're face to face with a difficulty, you are up against a discovery, and that's actually true, because we can target the discovery. Uh, we need to have a lot of in-depth chemical knowledge to actually approach something complex like nature. We need to combine information from chemi chemistry, biology, clinic, in the case of clinical applications. We need to use a, use a complementary methodology for the validation and stratification to fully understand the, the, uh, the interesting phenomena that we are studying in biology or nature. So then in the end, what is the meaning of life, universe and everything? I thought I heard Lars said analytical chemistry, right? No, that's not. Yeah, yeah, okay. 42, as you know, and it refers to, of course, uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. If you go in and check, if you haven't read it, read it. If you, if you haven't, uh, if you have read it, go and check what, uh, on Google, what they say now about 42. They come up with a, a suggestion on what's going on with 42, actually, in life, so. So, analytical chemistry is good. Stay in the good chemistry, don't go for what, uh, Breaking Bad was doing in, in uh, his chemistry lessons. Uh, I think we have a lot of tasks out there to help human mankind to, uh, for the future good, so to say. And by that, I give the word to next center. <laughs>